meeting of the Township Committee, October 16, 2017, the notice requirements provided for the Open Public Meetings Act have been satisfied. Notice of this meeting was properly given by transmission to the Star Ledger, the Independent, and the Chamber Times, and by posting at the Middletown Township Municipal Building and filing with the Township Clerk on, all on January 5, 2017. Committee Member Fiori. Here. Committee Member Sell. Here. Deputy Mayor Murray. Here. Mayor Schreiber. Here. Please rise for the resolution.
Next item, we have a presentation recognizing Veterans Affairs Committee for the World War I Doughboy Monument Restoration. Yeah, okay. You guys can come up. I'd like to call up Dennis Beauregard, Chairman of the Milltown Veterans Affairs Associate, uh, Committee, Tom Garretson, Vice Chairman, and also um, Veterans Affairs Committee members Bill Bow, Tom Hackett, Dick Furlong, Ron Stark, and Marty Keating. Now we have individual certificates for each member who's here, if you want. Uh, but I just want to say uh, a little bit about uh, the Veterans Affairs Committee, which uh, I don't know how many people are familiar. They're probably about, I guess, eight or nine years? Uh, six, 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 seven, 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 okay. And uh, it's probably one of the most effective boards or commissions that we have in the town. Uh, we were actually, Middletown's actually the first municipality in the state to create a municipal level Veterans Affairs Committee. And they have done a spectacular job in looking out for every aspect of veterans, uh, either their memories or programs that are available to them or whatever it is. And this is one of the great success stories. Uh, the Doughboy uh, Memorial that we have has been completely refurbished and uh, you know, it looks like it's brand new again. And it really is a beautiful uh, monument and we're going to be dedicating it uh, November 4th. 4th is the official dedication, so we're praying for the kind of we've been having. Uh, but it, it's a testament to the uh, folks right here raising the funds and everything. And we found a uh, sculptor, if you believe it, a sculptor in Middletown here, who was able to redo the uh, statue. It really is something to be very proud of. Uh, the World War, World War I Memorial is really what we have left. All the veterans have gone from uh, that period. And we think it's really important to keep the memory of these past conflicts alive for future generations. And it's something that we are very, uh, very excited about. Uh, Tom or Dennis, do you want to add anything to it? Uh, this is an honor to be selected to, uh, to serve on the committee, and we all put our heart and soul into it to be for our friends. Thanks, Dennis. Okay, let me give you the certificates. Dennis, yours. Uh, Tom. Bill. And I'm going to read one for somebody who's not here. I'll read the certificate. They're all the same, but they're individualized. Uh, this certificate is awarded to the Veterans Affairs Committee in recognition of spearheading the restoration of Middletown's important World War I Doughboy Monument. As we honor World War I's centennial anniversary, we thank you for helping to preserve this cherished monument and for reminding future generations of the role that Middletown played in one of the most significant conflicts in our nation's history. Thank you, gentlemen, and congratulations. Thank you.
Veterans Day is going to be coming up. We've uh, sort of retooled the parade, the annual parade, and it's going to be really, it's really going to be a big success this year. It's just not really that the weather holds out. Uh, it's going to be a little bit different. The, uh, the viewing stand is going to be in Campbell's Junction, which I think will be better for uh, attendance and more uh, people in that area. So we're hoping everybody's going to be able to come out. It's 1 o'clock, right, on the Sunday. Whereas Veterans Day, once called Armistice Day, originated as a national commemoration of the anniversary of the ending of World War I, Congress changed the name to Veterans Day in 1954 to expand the significance of the commemoration so that a grateful nation might pay homage to the veterans of all wars who have contributed so much to the preservation of, our, of the nation. And whereas Middletown Township and Middletown VFW Post 2179 will honor the sacrifice and valor of our brave servicemen and women with the Veterans Day Parade on Sunday, November 5th. And whereas we as citizens of a grateful nation are thankful for the opportunity to recognize our distinguished veterans whose service has allowed our nation to prosper and let us live in freedom. We pay special tribute to the valiant guardians of our freedom who remain listed in, as missing in action, and we offer support to the loving families who hope for their safe return. And whereas this year we celebrate the 60th anniversary of the Veterans Day Parade, the theme of the parade is Thank a Veteran, and on behalf of all Middletown residents, we will use this milestone to rededicate ourselves to honoring all the veterans who have served our great nation. And therefore, I, Mayor Jerry Schaffner and the Middletown Township Committee, do hereby proclaim November 11th as Veterans Day in Middletown Township, in recognition of the courageous efforts of our veterans. We invite the residents of Middletown Township to join us on at the Veterans Day Parade starting at Bayview Elementary School on Sunday, November 5th at 1 p.m. to honor our American heroes past and present. I just want to say that there is a reception after the parade, so we're encouraging everybody. All the bands have been assured are going to be coming back, and it's a great celebration. Uh, it's great to see the younger people, especially the, the marchers, interacting with the vets. It really is. It's a feel-good day all around, and it's a great way to pay our respects and say thank you to the brave uh, men and women who have given us so much here. Thank you, guys. Therefore, Mayor Jerry 
I, a Jerry Shopper, and the Town Township Committee, do hereby commend Stephen J. Cell for his invaluable contributions to the community. Thank you for your outstanding public service.
us to, to have such a wonderful day. Um, uh, thank you also to Maggie and her staff. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to uh, to attend on Saturday, but you know they said we celebrated the Middletown Art Center's 10th anniversary. So congratulations to Maggie, who does a fantastic job at that art center. Um, and just a, a tremendous, everyone who has something to do with it, so the instructors, the, the, the students, uh, and everyone that makes it such a wonderful place. So thank you for what you do and uh, what that Art Center means to this community. Um, it's great to, to see 10 years, and uh, I hope someday, though I doubt, I'll be here at 140 years old to see, uh, 130 years old to see the 100th anniversary of the Art Center. Um, and, you know, finally, just, a, you know, a comment um, that I'll make uh, with my colleague, uh, Steve Massell. Uh, Steve uh, has been on the committee one year less than me at this point. So uh, Steve joined. We were, we were kind of the newcomers back in uh, 2009 and 2010. But uh, it has been an absolute pleasure to serve with Steve. And, and uh, on behalf of myself and and the residents of Middletown. I, I thank you, Steve, for, for your contributions to this committee and to this uh, governing body, to, to the residents and, and taxpayers of Middletown. Um, Steve was uh, served as my deputy mayor in 2012. Um, a very trying year with, uh, with Superstorm Sandy or Hurricane Sandy or whatever we really designated call it. But um, I just I had too many memories to, uh, to go back on, but you know, I think the true testament in, for all of us on the Township Committee is, is Middletown a better place than, it, will it be a better place that you leave it on your last day as a committee member versus the first day that you joined? And, and I am really confident that Middletown is a much better place thanks to um, your contributions, Mr. Massell. So thank you for your continued uh, partnership, your friendship, and uh, all that you've done for this committee and for this municipality. Uh, we all owe you a debt of gratitude. So uh, thank you for all that many Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. I think Mayor. I'm going to be quick because I think we have a lot of public tonight, so I'll be fast. Uh, just uh, mentioned the, the anniversary gala that we uh, just celebrated our 10 year anniversary, and I'm always happy to see Maggie here. Um, you know, who's so crucial and integral to that organization, and it's uh, such a tremendous asset to our community. We have over 65,000 people that go through there on an annual basis, um, so it's certainly something to be proud of, and uh, we really couldn't do it without you, Maggie. Um, we're very, very proud of you. Uh, Janet, proud of you too. It's a tremendous event every year. You raise the bar on Middletown Day, and it's, it's again, another tremendous asset to the community. Um, completely fundraised. Uh, there are no tax dollars that go into that, so to pull off an event of that kind of magnitude is it's 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 huge, and uh, you deserve a lot of kudos for that. Uh, so thank you to everyone, and thank you for your your partnership and your support uh, giving that event to Middletown. Um, we have our first historic lantern tour um, with a Surrey carriage drawn. Um, Horse drawn carriage through the Middletown Village this weekend. Uh, it was Friday night, it was sold out. Uh, so there's uh, another um, wonderful new program we have, we've been offering the community, and that, that is this historic heritage uh, tourism. So we're very happy about that, and it's another thing we're going to be raising the bar on next year. Um, the only other place that um, I think I went last weekend was the emergency services. And um, that was uh, a wonderful event for the police, the fire, the EMS, and the OEM. And it was nice to have everybody come together and have a, a very nice, pleasurable, enjoyable day for once and um, just enjoy each other's company. So that was much deserved. And then very quickly, I uh, just wanted to say something about Steve Massell. I'm very sad to see you go, Steve. Um, it was an honor to serve with you. And it's on, an honor to be your friend. I know I knew Steve before he came on the committee. Our families know each other. Um, and he's a wonderful father, husband, and a wonderful human being. So congratulations, Steve. And uh, you'll be missed. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, just a couple of things. I'm going to you know, reiterate a few things that my colleagues have said. Uh, Middletown Day uh, was incredible. The weather, it was unseasonably warm, but not ridiculously in that one year. 
And uh, I think the police estimated that we had about 12,000 people come through. And uh, it was really, really just picture perfect. And it really is Middletown, that small town feel. When you see you know, young kids face painting and the hay rides and everything. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, I had the pleasure of doing a couple of ribbon cuttings. One was uh, a place that, that I think they were one of the vendors at Middletown. They fruit a bowl. Am I saying fruit bowl? Yeah, fruit a bowl. And uh, when I went home and told my wife and kids, I'm doing fruit a bowl. And they're like, oh, well, that's great. You know, they were all impressed that it's uh, a pretty trendy spot. So uh, we're very happy to see them open up. Uh, every time we have a storefront that is now occupied, we all benefit, and uh, we hope they have a lot of traffic and do really well. Um, as uh, Deputy Mayor pointed out, the Heritage Tourism tours have been widely successful. In fact, they were so successful, they would sell out, and we would have to add more to the end. So this is something I think we're going to see really expanded over the years. Uh, Middletown has such a great history. We have to exploit it and really get people in tune with what we have right here. I think we take it for granted a lot of times on what we have. When you think the British walked down uh, King's Highway and took over Old First Church for a hospital after the Battle of Monmouth, they looked George Washington in the eye. I mean, these are tremendous uh, historic events we have that unfolded right here. So we should all be very proud and I hope everybody takes advantage of one or more of the tours and we're going to look to expand into different parts of the town and uh, really get Especially newer people who move into town, we really want them to have an appreciation for what they moved into. Uh, the farmers market this year, uh, we I think we ended up having six. We lost a couple to inclement weather, uh, but that's something that we're going to look to expand next year also. Um, let's see. Oh, the childhood cancer uh, fundraiser I go to every year, and it's it's a young uh, young lady who is a catalyst for it, six years old. And she's surviving, not wood, but um, something that we really have to uh, make sure the funding goes into. And I always like to support that every year. It's a big middle town turnout, and they do a great job for childhood cancer. And when you see kids six, seven, eight running around who've been through more than most of us will ever go through in a lifetime, it is really uh, amazing and it's inspiring, but also aggravating that there's so little money put into it uh, at a federal level. So. I uh, really have to give uh, Andrea Gorsinger and her family a lot of credit for all the effort they put into this. They did raise a lot of money, so we're very happy to be a part of that. And they also did an Eagle Scout ceremony for Steve Gardner at the VFW. Uh, we have a tremendous program here. I'm always happy to be a part of it, and these kids deserve a lot of credit for everything they do for their projects. It's a lot of work, and they uh, really always do a spectacular job. So with that, thank you very much. Enough out of me. Okay, uh, before we start the public comments, I just want to remind everybody to please give your name and address and uh, please keep your comments to five minutes. If you have more to say and want to speak to us, we'd be happy to stay around afterwards, but uh, just to be conscious of everybody else who wants to speak. So, okay, uh, who would care to speak first? Okay.
percent increase? Thirty-four percent would have received a tax increase of up to five to ten percent over five years in your municipal tax bill if we didn't make this change. So hundred percent of people, including you and I, because I don't live in the garbage district either, would have seen a municipal property tax increase, which in Oak Hill would be a little bit more than some other areas. You would have seen your taxes rise due to the cost of the re increase in recycling fees by us keeping the status quo. Recycling is state mandatory, and it's the ability we have to pick up. It comes out of your municipal taxes. It does not come out of the special garbage tax for that district or not. So based on the contractors in Oregon Contact could ensure get a little bit further into it, but 100% of the residents would have seen a 5 to 10% tax increase in your bill, which probably makes up a lot to that 22%, you know, depending on how you contract it, you do once a week or twice a week. So you would receive a we receive a 10 percent tax increase with no increase in service or anything so that's where that 100 percent number comes into play it has nothing to do with garbage pickup it would be a hundred percent increase it would be a hundred percent of the town residents well that's that's not not what you're quoted to say it is it is on that okay. yeah. um but anyway i'd like the uh, committee to consider in the future taking the garbage and the recycling out of the tax bill and putting it over into the township of Middletown Sewage Authority, and then the Sewage Authority could charge on a on a service basis as opposed to being charging the residents on a basis of your assessed value. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, is there anybody else who would care to speak?
kind of run the whole thing. Because, but that's the way there was some kind of a change through right. you know, through legislative uh, legislative change through kind of took the power of the DEP and kind of into the hands of the But they have oversight on the LSRPs. They don't have any they, they have not provided any oversight. They have never even stepped foot on the site. No, no. They I tried to get in touch with their enforcement division. I mean they're they're giving me the run around too. It was actually it's, it's required that they have to have a sign upon entering the facility with the Department of Environmental Protection that there's an active remediation going on, explaining some information about it, uh, contact information and whatnot. And uh, I actually have spoke to Rich uh, in the health department. You've been here that? And he said that he was going to talk to someone and I get a call back today from the town. So I didn't think get a call back from anyone either from the town. And uh, it, it's, he claimed he didn't know anything about it, which I mean, may be the case, but they, they did a, an excavation back in 2004 before they built the complex, Sentex Homes. Mm -hmm. And I can imagine they would have to get some permits or something from the town. Um, I, I don't understand how they were able to build. I mean, they excavated the soil. I, I don't know how good their job is because I have a lot of sites we've dealt with the DEP. They don't, they don't do that. So, yeah. I mean, the environmental they permits. a lot of contamination, so that's, that's the problem. The environmental permits would be state permits, you know, wastewater and, and all of that. So, you know, this is easy enough to, to check into, but I'm not sure what our place is in this whole situation, what the town's place is. In yeah. fact, Tony may be you know, more familiar with it. I think we heard about this. We got an email from the first Friday last week. I called. So I did look into uh, the old record. We pulled out the file from when the development was first approved, and uh, the, the property used to be an uh, orchard, and so there was testing for the typical pesticides, arsenic, um, uh, which were not at a high level at the time. There was no mention anywhere about TCE, which is a typical byproduct of a, a dry cleaner. You know, that's always the case. Um, and there sort of was a dry cleaner. I mean, my immediate reaction was it must have been a dry cleaner that existed in shopping center next door because it's downstream. You're downstream from there. Yeah, so every yeah, dry cleaner. Yeah, I know. Back in those days. So um, it's natural that eventually the groundwater got to your site. Just that we were never notified. It's, it's gone beyond center. It's gone beyond that. It's, it's gone over the Union Square Mall. Okay. So it's going towards the water. So we will investigate and find out you know, what the responsibility of, of the um, of the property owner, which is the whole um, But like I said, we just learned about this in the last week. Yeah, I can look into it from the state. I'll call the EP. I'll be in my office tomorrow. So let me call them and see what I can find out sure. that they have. If you want, because we're we're up against the clock now. Okay. If you can stay for a little while, because I'd like a little bit more information from you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Just uh, a little bit till uh, meeting at today. Thank you. Uh, anybody else care to speak? Uh oh. Who's a troublemaker? I can see. Yeah. Hey. I just wanted to say happy birthday. Oh, sorry. Chris Sandy, 34 official. Um, I'm very happy about the public garbage pickup now because I know that we've had a lot of problems with the private carriers that haven't come to life. But when I first heard about this, all the things that I had problems with will now be erased. And the fact that we're going to have 26 pickups now versus 24, the bulk pickup. And when you look at the net effect taxes versus the private carrier, I don't think it would be that much. And for what we're getting, I think that it's definitely a benefit. I don't see any detriments to this program. You know what, Chris, the decision is really made for us because we got two, two bids, one to keep it the way it was and one to include everybody. And if we really kept it the way it was, Everybody would have seen a big tax increase and gotten no benefit from it. At least now, there's bulk pick, unlimited bulk pickup, which you used to have to pay $100 for item or whatever it was. And I, I've had both. I've had private and I'm in the garbage district, and I love it. 
Now you can deduct it from your taxes, which is a benefit, you know, it may be a uh, minor. So these are all things that went into it. Now if you, if you keep it the way it is, and nobody sees any benefit, and it's a tax increase, how do you justify that when you had the opportunity to save the overwhelming amount of people money or kept them close to flat, gave them an extra two recycling pickups, 24 bulk pickups a year, and uh, you know, now it's deducted from your taxes. You don't have to go around, it's locked in for five years. You don't have to you know, pay it every quarter. So there are advantages. Is it perfect? No, you know, nothing is perfect. But sometimes you have to make the decision for what's best for you know the overall township. And we really wrestled with this. You know, it, a lot of research, a lot of time and effort went into it. But you know, at the end of the day, and I hate when people say this, at the end of the day, um, it, it really is overall best for the township. And I think people were realize that who were questioning it right now as time goes on, that it will be an improvement once you know the changeover takes place. And you know, two thir one or two thirds of the town are already in it, and people who are coming in buying new houses are asking to be put into it. So there's something to it. And the fact that the Kirk Arlington half of the yard right by the tag there mm -hmm. is tremendous because my garbage would not be picked up many times. Right. I never got credit for that. They never even acknowledged it. Right. So this is, I think, a great thing. Yeah, thank you, because it's, it's good to hear. And, you know, every time we explain it, people, you know, uh, feel better about it. And Mayor, just, just one thing to add, and, and thank you for, for your comments um, also. Um, you know, the other, the other thing is, you wind up with, there are other ancillary costs, too, that we have to factor in. And when you have, I mean, in my neighborhood, I live in the private collection district, so I may be paying a little bit more, depending on what this one's into. But five days a week, there are garbage cans out. Five days a week, there's a garbage truck at 6 a.m. in the morning picking up garbage on the neighborhood streets, which make a tremendous wear on the municipal streets, which we all know that the streets need a lot of improvement as it is. I mean, a lot of it is due to heavy truck traffic, which is really not allowed on residential streets outside of these types of carriers. So there are other benefits, too, that I think um, we're not necessarily promoting, but come as ancillary benefits. Okay. Uh, is there anybody else who care to speak? Yes, sir. Oh, Leo, you're hiding in the back there. Holy cow. You're watching the Yankees. Good evening. Use a microphone, Leo. I have a tape. I'll stand close to the microphone. Uh, I looked in the uh, uh, county uh, uh, directory, and they have four titles for uh, uh, municipalities: uh, village of, city of, borough of, township of. They have no such terminology as municipality of. So on the uh, uh, explanation of the township budget, uh, I'm notice I'm not saying the municipal tax budget because municipal tax or municipal, you know, I'm not lecturing here, just uh, filling in uh, a book, a book, a book, um, a basis of understanding where I. I am and where I'm going, I do not think you should be using municipal taxes to decrease in 2017. Uh, you should use township taxes to decrease. You know what, Leo, I, I hear what you're saying, but municipal is just differentiated from Board of Ed and County. Village, township, borough, they're all municipal, municipal designations. So that's just sort of a catch-all for that part of the budget, uh, of the bill. 
um, when you go over to when you go over from this to the tax payment bill itself, it creates a problem that you're you're dealing with statistics that come from a split calendar year due to the state budgeting that imposes a system on the local governments. Then you have a net one year, one year, four quarter, and I guess it goes on the, the form, uh, and, and, and I can recommend something that will help it, help this government to clarify these kinds of documents for all the citizens. I come from a humanity, philosophy, theology, uh, educational background. Uh, I'm not a mathematician. I don't come from STEM, science, technology, electronics, and mathematics. I love that stuff. I try to understand that stuff. I even currently read in that area today. Um, this material needs to be prepared academically for every senior in Middletown so that both of these documents can be understand, understood because it can present, be presented academically and, 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 and average class study materials so that you can understand when you're dealing with a four quarter uh, a payment through 2015 only and we're not and then you can understand what's going on in a four quarter payment in the final 2015 third and fourth quarter and the uh, first two quarters uh, preliminary of 2016. There's where confusion comes in big time because I've, I've heard a president down at the, the, the council, uh, the borough council, uh, uh, say at a meeting when I lived there six years uh, or more ago, uh, the, the person was a, 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 somebody, an accountant in the Air Force. He'd been on with the council for three years. I still don't understand this referencing this kind of this stuff. This is not clear. This is abstruse. It's abstruse for me. I struggle with this. I've got all sorts of paperwork documentation. This is not clear. It is not transparent. And you folks ought to just imagine how can we present this stuff in a clear way such that a senior in Middletown uh, high schools can be presented this, this in a civic government program that will teach at least minimally the, the first ten amendments or articles of the Constitution and stuff about and, and the, the state constitution. You need to get these young people and old people like me up to snuff on what is difficult to understand because there's a lot of ledger domain and legal stuff and accounting stuff that is not is prima facie uh, evident to uh, a person struggling to understand this. Okay, Leo, we're going to have to wrap it up. From your lips to God's ears, I wish they would teach kids more yes, of the civic where, stuff. Where, where, could I, where could I meet with somebody that will deal with this rather than, you know, I spoke and that's the end of it. Yeah. I, I'd like to carry on with this. State, you know, state has a meeting, okay? What's that? State still has a meeting, and, you know, we'll go over uh, the best way to get this to the necessary folks, okay? Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. Uh, is there anybody else who would care to speak? Seeing no further members of the public come forward, move to close the public portion and move for adjournment. Second. Second. Yes. 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 Yes.